Push that rock. I'm Simpson mad. Sick em bears. So we're going to talk about partitions. A partition is a fancy word for a chop. So when you think about chopping up a carrot, you chop it up and you have a bunch of little sub carrots. Okay. So we have an interval here. It's a closed interval. So that means A and B are included. And a partition of that interval is a subset of the interval. That means it chooses elements of this interval. So we're going to get numbers out of here. It includes, this subset includes A, the initial term, and B, the very last term, and X values strictly betwixt A and B. Okay, so that's what a partition is. It's just some subset of this. Oh, that's pretty easy. Let's do an example. So here I have an interval from five to nine. And a partition, we use the Greek letter rho. It looks like a P, but it's the Greek letter rho to represent a partition frequently. Um, is a subset of this interval. So I just pick numbers in this interval, but I must pick five. Five has to be in the set, and nine must be in the set for it to be a partition. So I pick five, and then I pick some other guys. Well, how about we just chop it up nice and even? Six, seven, eight, nine. So six, seven, eight, nine. So notice what I did. I created some little sub intervals. I have an interval from five to six, an interval from six to seven, an interval from seven to eight, and an interval from eight to nine. So I just chopped it up, like chopping up a carrot. And this is my partition. Now, we don't have to use a nice regular partition like that. In fact, that's the definition. If all of the intervals are the same size, if you, if you chop that carrot, so every little sub carrot is the same length, then it's a regular partition. But it doesn't have to be that way. I could chop here at 2 pi, and then I could chop here at e squared, and then my partition could be 5, 2 pi, e squared, and 9. That would be very irregular, okay? And for our purposes, this is not too useful. But there could be cases where this would be useful, for our, but we're not going to do any advanced, really hard stuff or anything tricky. So you know, we'll just, for us, this will be easy. Easier is to just chop it up regularly. So that seems pretty easy. Partition seems to be easy. What's confusing about that? Why are we studying this in Cal 2? Well, the issue of size confuses students. A partition has size. So here's a nice little interval from one to three. And I want to chop it at, say, square root of 2, which is about 1.4. So maybe it's about right here. And then I want to chop it. I'm going to chop it at 1. Of course, I have to chop it 1 always. Then I chop it square root of 2. And then maybe chop it somewhere else. Like, let's chop it at E. And so 2.718 about. And then chop it at 3. So <clears throat> my partition here is 1 square root of 2 E 3. Whoops. 3. There we go. So what's the size of this partition? And you, you'd be forgiven for saying, oh, the size is four. I mean, there's four numbers in there. Okay, but no, we say the size of this partition is three. Not because I ended at three. Dead gummit, I wish I hadn't, that, that had nothing to do with it. It's because this initial chop is not counted as one, but counted as zero. So this is x sub 0 right here. This is x sub 1 right here. And this is x sub 2 here, making this term x3. It's my third selection because the initial chop is the zeroth selection. So zeroth selection, first selection, second selection, third. Uh, did I go all the way? Yeah, I have to go three. Uh, third selection, OK? Man, I wish I hadn't gone from 1 to 3. Hopefully, that didn't confuse you. I just started this with what's confusing, and then I chose three, which happened, and then I chose the size of three. 
Oh, well, you are smart kiddos. I'm just not a very smart teacher. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to a selection. Selections are associated with partitions. So maybe I should have underlined all of this in red. A selection associated with a partition of some interval is also a subset of the interval. So again, I'm picking from here. Some students always think I have to pick from the partition. No, 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 you do not. You pick with your selection points from the interval, but you must do so in a certain way. You must do so such that every selection point, S stands for one of the members of the selection, and I is just whichever one you're grabbing, first, second, third, fifth. Okay, so S sub I is an element of this interval here. So you go from up to the ith choice for x, starting with the choice before that. That seems kind of confusing, but a, you know, an example will clarify. So let's just do an example. So remember our partition from five to nine that was regular? Let's get some selections associated with that. Now, when I choose selections, now remember, this is a zero, one, two, three. So this is a size three uh, partition. Okay, so this will be a size three selection. Now, I must choose a selection point from five to six, you know, like maybe 5.803721. Boy, I'm gonna have to choose easier numbers if I'm gonna fit in here. Uh, I'll just fix that, okay. Now I have to choose from six to seven. Oh, okay, so maybe I'm gonna choose everybody's favorite number, 6.7773, okay? And then I have to choose a number from seven to eight. And so maybe I'll choose everybody's least favorite number, 7.4. And there is a selection. Now, sometimes it's easy just to follow a rule. Like there's a left-hand rule. Guess what that would be? I'll give you a wild guess what the left-hand rule would be. The left-hand rule would be choose, when you're choosing from five to six, choose the left-hand side, left-hand in. From six to seven, choose the left in. And from, did I put two commas? Oh my gosh, what's happening to me this morning? Okay, and then when I'm choosing from seven to eight, I choose the left end. That's called the left end rule. Guess what the right hand rule is? I bet you could fill this in. You know, I choose from five to six, I choose six. Choose from six to seven, I choose seven. Choose from seven to eight, I choose eight. Voila. Midpoint rule, what's the midpoint rule? Well, you always choose the midpoint. So from five to six, I would choose 5.5. Six to seven, 6.5, and seven to eight, 7.5, okay? So uh, here's another one more example, just to show you something that could happen that's confusing and to do an example that's irregular. Here's a selection point, I mean a partition of this interval, it was rather irregular. Again, we have zero, one, two, three, so the size is three, so the size of this will be three. So I'm gonna get my first, second, and third selection points. Now when I'm choosing from phi to two pi, I can choose two pi. And when I'm choosing from two pi to e squared, guess what? I can choose two pi again. Now that's kind of confusing. So that number can show up twice. That's kind of weird because, I mean, this isn't really another element. <laughs> so, but, in the definition, it had uh, brackets, if you'll remember, I had brackets. So it means when I'm choosing from two pi to e squared, I can choose two pi. And when I was over here, I could choose two pi. So it could happen. And then finally from e squared to nine, I have to, I can't pick two pi again, but I could pick whatever. So, you know, I'll pick 8.9. And there is a selection. So this is just a weird thing that can happen. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you chop a carrot and then pick some of the parts to eat. Math made simple, Simpson math.